Early Flicker, June the 22nd, 1935. Battle over control of bank system. What will the government do for money? Endover, murder of a tobacconist. Ah, some cool hair. Over, Emshire, population 31,200 inhabitants. Dear Mr. Poirot, well, what do you think? I believe that I won this round. The end of our affair went like clockwork, don't you feel? But the fun has only just started. I would like to draw your attention to Bexilon Sea on the 25th of this month. We're having a crazy time. Best wishes, ABC. The next crime will be in Bexhill. We must warn Jap to Scotland Yard. Did the letter indicate anything that might help the police? To be honest, I think we can already guess something about the next victim. But I need to think about it a little more. Let us examine this more closely. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Yes, this eye is weird. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Yes, the eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Nothing to report for these characters. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Both letters were written on the same typewriter and show the same characteristics. You surprise me, Poirot. You usually ignore material proof. But there is nothing usual about these cases, things. Nothing must be overlooked. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. So, Poirot, have you found something? 
Oui, I believe so. But I am afraid it is not enough to stop the murderer. Let us go and see Chief Inspector Chap. I will explain there. Scotland Yard, please. Jap has invested a great deal in his career. Chap is an investigator greatly respected by his peers. London. I really like this city. One thing is certain, you never get bored here. Alice Asher was murdered in Andover. The ABC Killer's first murder. Jap appears to be snowed under. Jap appears to already be overloaded with work. My news is not going to improve matters. Bonjour, Chief Inspector. I am afraid we have some bad news. I have just received another letter signed ABC. The next crime will be on the 25th in Bexilancy. Are you completely sure it's from the same person? I have compared the two letters. There is no doubt about it. I suppose you think he's going to carry out his threats? I fear so. Good God, Poirot. Bexhill is very busy at this time of year, and we have no idea who the next victim will be. I suspect that the name of the second victim will start with B. What on earth makes you think such a thing? I thought about it when I saw the name Asha clearly written over the shop door of the unfortunate woman who was murdered in Andover last month. When I received a letter mentioned in Bexhill, I deduced that the victim, like the town, might have been chosen by alphabetical order. So, it's an alphabet fiend. I'm going to have a list drawn up of all the people whose name starts with B. I hope there aren't too many of them. Bien. We should leave you to work, Chief Inspector. You have a few days to prepare yourself. Thank you for coming, my friends. Chief Inspector Jap, your call does not bode well. Indeed, we have just found the body of a young woman on the beach in Bexhill. An ABC was placed on the body. We'll be there as soon as possible. Bexhill is a delightful town. It would be nice to come back and visit. I do not entirely agree. Walking on the beach damages my shoes, and it hurts my knee. So the years have not spared you, my friend. It's the same for all of us. That is exactly what I said to myself when I saw you back from your travels. Poirot! Do not be offended, Hastings. I can see Jap waiting for us. And from his face, I would say that things are not looking good. Bexhill seems to be a pleasant little town.
Bexhill is a pretty little seaside resort with elegant architecture. Although, personally, I prefer more modern buildings. How do you do, gentlemen? Chief Inspector? I fear your admirer has struck again, Poirot. We haven't yet identified the victim, but it's a young woman, 20 to 25 years old. Death occurred last night between half past 11 and 1 o'clock, and we found an ABC guide on the body. Was she pretty? Come on, Poirot, that's rather out of place. It has no bearing on the murder. Are you certain? For a woman, it is often the most important thing. It often decides their destiny. The body hasn't been moved. You can see for yourself. Has the press been informed? Not yet, but I'm planning to. I haven't yet informed them about the presence of the ABC guide in Andover. Nobody has reported a young woman missing? Not for the moment. No witnesses, I imagine? Indeed. We've asked everybody who may have met a young woman fitting her description last night to come and see us, but I have little hope of gaining anything from it. It's early days, Chief Inspector, and the news may not have spread around the town yet. I hope you're right, Hastings. The guide is open at the page for the Bexhill train times. A braided silk belt. It may have belonged to the victim. This key is too small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, it is for a padlock. These marks have been left by a rope or a braided cloth. She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. Apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Either the murderer stole her belongings or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Poor child must have been strangled with his bread belt. Unfortunately, in view of the fabric, it is unlikely that we will find any prints. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The medical officer should confirm that the victim was strangled with her own belt. That's what I thought. She shows the usual signs of strangulation. With a little luck, we'll find prints this time. You are too optimistic, Hastings. Our killer is far too meticulous for that.
The number is upside down. This is definitely at number six. A dual locking padlock. I need to find the code and then insert a key. Purse is full. Yet again, we can dismiss theft as the motive for the murder. Here is the watch she must have removed to prevent it from getting wet. A top brand lipstick. She liked to take care of her appearance. As well as a photo of the victim with some company. It could be useful to me. It definitely was here that the victim left her belongings. Betty's first day at work. Mom is very proud of you. Elizabeth Barnard, 7 August 1931. So, the young lady did have a name starting with B, and she worked as a ginger cat, an establishment that must be slightly further along the beach. Jap has gone to the police. The victim has been identified and her family had reported her disappearance. She was called... Elizabeth Barnard, mainly Betty. She worked as a ginger cat at the cafe slightly further along the beach. But Poirot, how on earth? Never mind. Do you have a address? Yes, she lived with her parents on the street leading to the beach, number 22. Shall we go? You are far too impatient, Hastings. Let the poor people take in the news first. Let us go and visit the cafe where Betty worked. Could it be the same buildings as on the victim's photo? This is definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. minute, gentlemen. This is a well-laid table. Nothing is out of place and, above all, no creases. Something tells me that she's the owner of the ginger cat. This woman must be the owner of the ginger cat. It looks like something is bothering her. How can I help you? A hot chocolate and a tea for my friend, please. I'll bring it straight away.
What a pity. I don't have any chance to make it work. I need to know the time range during which Betty was working on her own. Where is Betty? Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? Interesting. Betty was alone between 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Who did she serve? These are the different waiting staff's bills. Which ones were written by Betty? Most probably a single man, a whiskey lover, maybe the murderer? This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. Most probably a family. Betty served a family and a man on his own, a whiskey drinker. Maybe the murderer. This information will help me to progress. What? Gentlemen, what are you doing? We are searching for clues, mademoiselle. My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a detective, and this is Captain Hastings. Does Betty Barnard work here? That is correct. She should have been here a while ago. Punctuality is the first rule of politeness. I fear that Miss Barnard will not be coming today. She has just been found, dead, on the beach a few hundred meters from the cafe. How awful! Poor young thing! What happened? She appears to have been murdered. This is most distressing. How this will affect my business, I shudder to think. Do not be so sure. Miss Barnard's tragic death may be a good advertisement for you. It makes one despair of human nature. Poor young girl. She was a hard-working and pleasant young woman. I didn't know her that well. She'd only been here for two summers. I know that she had a young man. He used to call for her sometimes. This photo was found. Is this him? Yes, that's him all right. But I haven't seen him for some time. I find young people today very hard to understand. You needn't tell me that. A few weeks ago, they argued just outside the cafe. Imagine what my customers must have thought. I hope for you that it was an isolated incident. It must be difficult to keep a respectable establishment if your staff shows themselves to be so shameless. The young man only made a scene the once. Jealousy, no doubt. It must be said the young girl was very pretty. Thank you for your time, Mademoiselle Merion. You have been of great help. The customer who ordered the whiskey might provide us more information. He may have been the last one to see Betty alive. It is an interesting idea, Hastings. Maybe he is a regular guest. What do you think, Mademoiselle? I don't think so. Our regular guests tend to order tea and cakes. At this time of the year, there are a lot of tourists about you never see again. That's what I thought. Time to visit Betty's home. <laughs>